Greetings YouTube, this is BJ Black and welcome to part 39 of my Let's Play of Amayui Castle Meister. So, the girl from the path of flowing spirits. Chapter 5. Maybe we're halfway done. Alright, so these mini flying things without wings are going through the sky. These happen to be spirits that are haven't lost their connection to corporeal space yet. And actually have a connection back to their bodies somewhere. And they're being pulled somewhere as if guided. Nanda. So, Kisner happens to witness this. So, normally, spirits don't act like this. Obviously, right? They wouldn't gather in numbers, and when they're being guided, they're usually invisible as well. So, with that many being headed in one direction as if guided, they're probably being guided to one of the other world territories. So, these other world territories are spaces on the continent where the dead and spirits tend to gather. So, the spirits of the dead are supposed to head there without getting lost or wandering. And, curiously, they're all doing it at once today. Ah, yes. Here it says there's one inside of Infrelu's kingdom. It's called Tamamori no Michi, or the Way of Flowing Spirits. Well, still, this is unusual and it's bothering Kisnir. Then the numbers of spirits here is what's really outside of the ordinary, and she's hoping that nothing can bad comes of this. Uh -huh. Yeah, now we cut to something else. <laughs> damn it, damn it, damn it all. なぜ自己国王であるヨガこのような惨めな思いをしなければならぬ。これも全てあのアバロとかいうクソガキの。<laughs> <laughs> No, oh, he's just so humiliated by that defeat on the battlefield. Why's that gotta happen to him? And it's all of Aro's fault. Rosaline tells Gish that he should head back to the capital. He shouldn't be here in the, again, way of flowing spirits without some kind of permission from the king. And if the king finds out, well... 
Yori Sashi the Serena. Shut up and don't tell him what to do. You are all Nanoda. Kono influence all Samir Ketsas of Nanoda. Do the Omeo Meto Haibokusta Sagata o Tamini Saraseru. So he calls himself a king, even though he's just a prince. And anyway, he is of the bloodline that rules the kingdom. So why did why did he have to show the people him himself failing? He's more angry that he failed, more angry that people saw him fail than the fact that he failed. Rosaline. So, he's gonna be relying on Rosaline to help him out with her spirits again. What's the plan? <laughs> Do you have to ask? He's gonna tear those people into people's pieces. She calls him out. His goal has changed. Before it was getting his hands on the castle, and now it's revenge against the people he hates. So he's talking about how we're going to do it. So the plan is to use the spirits that don't need rest and just hurry our party until we're too tired to fight. So he's not even going to deny that his goal has changed. Now he does. Now he denies it. He says if we take care of those guys who have the castle now, it's our automatically his. Okay. Girs, don't lose sight of the big picture. If you're going to be a king, you need to show a figure to the people that, to the people and your soldiers, that they can be proud of. Why don't you consider some other methods? Going to war is only one way of relating to people and there are things that you can't get by way you can't get by fighting well that would be just too humiliating for him instead of just fighting them entering negotiations or entreating with them he thinks it's beneath him. Oh, well, sometimes she makes an expression. But her words aren't getting through to him, obviously. She is just saying pretty things that have no practical value. And he who is a king knows how to do things, and that is to show his power flagrantly. <laughs> Next time, he's going to come with so much power that he can grind them into dust. Well, 
失敗すればもう王都にも戻れなくなる So he's going too far If he tries another incident it'll certainly reach the king's ears and if you fail again you won't be able to return to the capital Yoni sashizu o suru na to nando yeba wakaru He's saying don't tell him what to do again Yokei no kuchi wa kikunakute ii Yo no tame ni sono mi o tsukai tsubuse so yu shikumei daro Luzu oke ni tsukairu sorei shi yo so she needs to keep her mouth shut and just do everything she can to support him. That's her duty. Alright, she understands and for his sake she'll do it. Ah, well, she said that she would get her hands on the castle, but he's decided that that's not her priority. That her priority now is to kill those guys exclusively. Yeah, his goal has changed. Well. So, she knew him as he was growing up and now apparently she thinks that time can warp people. Since her body doesn't have the flow of time in it, to see him grow and change like this makes her sad and a bit jealous. Hmm. Yeah, she isn't in a enviable position, is she? Alright, Kisnir has related the events of last night to the party. So now we get to talk about it. Yep, sounds like an ill omen. Yeah, of our agrees. So, spirits, moving as a group. Does that mean that Influence's spirit wielders could be nearby? Do such people exist? Well, yes. Her confederation, the Santashi A Federation, has had lots of wars with Infru's kingdom. And in the old records, these spirit wielders show up several times. So, Infru's kingdom has people who can manipulate spirits. Is that what you're saying? So, there was an incident when one spirit wielder managed to wipe out an entire army division. That incident was about a hundred years, more than a hundred years ago. So, that person was a human, right? 
Japanese is one of those funny languages where the plural is hard to distinguish. So you can interpret what she said up to this point as there is one of them. And yeah, apparently she was alive a hundred years ago. Now, I was thinking that this person can't still be alive, but Rishan Seri says that powerful mages can possibly have techniques to lengthen the, their lives. So, that's a possibility. In any case, in the records they were able to find, all of the records, her figure did not change. So this spirit wielder, according to what she knows, is being used by the royal, by the nobility. And in the past she committed some unforgivable sin and is now in the position she is in. That's a pretty harsh story. But now that we're speaking about it, Navarro remembers the incident at Riquebel when all of a sudden they stumbled and hit a town. Yeah, she was trying to avoid a carriage. And, could, is that a coincidence? In that battle there, in Rickbell, there were also a number of spirits participating. Furthermore, when Gilsh pulled out, it was at the behest of a spirit as well. So, Rishan Seri apparently knows about in Infrudus, there is the way of flowing spirits. So, how about we go there? Bam. You know, when she gets her head on straight, she's actually really useful. Perhaps we'll find that spirit wielder oh, there. So, in any case, she's going to lecture him about other things. Setting aside the spirits thing, the management of the castle is too lax. Yep. I've all got kidnapped without any trouble. Jeez, stop running that in my face. Alright, Rishu, if you want to, cooperate with Kisnir on the security of the castle. Alright, she's got it. With her help, she won't even let a cat in or out. That's pretty harsh. Jeez, she's such a racist. No, no, she isn't talking to you. They're joking. And her reactions are funny. Yeah, 
and you should let cats come and go. <laughs> so, what's our plan? Alright. Are we able to move the castle yet? Nope, we're not ready yet. So, we're going to continue the usual stuff. Manage these areas and get the plants and statues and things fixed up. And since we've got more people living in the castle, we can handle better requests from people, etc. Oh, and furthermore, exploring the interior of the castle some more. Yep, lots of stuff to do, which is basically like the stuff we've been doing for the last four chapters. Apparently we can also talk to Deet with the Aquatic Beast Vanguard for this and that stuff. Now here it recommends you take care of the castle formations. And... Oh yes, it says you can create new weapons. And our next goal will be to get Fia up to her goddess rank 10. So, also getting along with your party members better will be another way to add to your level. So, keep leveling up all your characters. Okay. And that's just some arbitrary free map. Yep. Well, we've got a lot to see here. So, Rishio is coming to join us in the workshop. And she's groping Navarro. Yeah, she's gotten him to have a boner. Obviously, she's trying to seduce him again. Did she actually think that he hadn't noticed? From the way she spoke. Anyway. So, getting a husband into the mood for sex is apparently the wife's duty. Uh, sure. Except we're still not married. Well then, let's talk about Raurosso's history. Please remember it. Oh god. Look, don't need it. Please just let him concentrate on his work. She says that sometimes you let your hands work while your mind is doing other things and that will be the most effective way of getting things done. So, are you ready for a wonderful story? Yeah, 
So this little history lesson is going to be part of his duties as the new, I don't know, ruler's husband? Do they have a title for that? So, him knowing dates and times and people is going to be necessary. Furthermore, he needs to learn some noble manners. Look, he's not interested. Look, Avaro, what you need to do is simple. Take her to the nearest cliff and throw her off the castle. Aim for a puddle if you feel particularly nice about it. Alright, Avaro is going to take charge here. So he's taking her by the shoulders, declared that he's going to tell her something, and she says she's ready, and she's blushing. And fidgeting a bit. Is she expecting a confession of love? Yeah, probably. Look, he's not about to confess to her. In fact, it's basically the opposite. The person of our likes is Fia. He can't take her up on her offers. Well, she's glad that he's focused on one target. And while it's not her at the moment, she just she had just asks him to turn that direction towards her and everything will be fine. Gee, she's never going to give up. Well, why should she give up? Until Lavara feels the way she wants him to, why should she stop? Lavara says that his feelings aren't going to change. At the very least, it's not going to change when she's acting like this. Really? For your whole life? Oh, by the way, you stopped moving your hands. Well, his whole life does seem like a long time. And yes, he needs to get back to work. So Avaro is Rishu's first, the first person that Rishu has felt would be appropriate to her. So if she's a little pushy, she, he should forgive her for it. Hmm. So he's saying, don't keep groping him. Even though we're not even lovers. Well, we may not be lovers, but Fia has given him permission to have sex with other people, right? Yes. Well, this is going nowhere, so she'll try a different tack. Well, 
So, her lady is a goddess. And since that's true, the, she is demanding a certain level of quality from her people. And actions as well. So, us believers need to not be discriminating about these sorts of things. So, in addition to believers, which she refers to herself, there's also the apostle, which is Avaro. So if he continues to just be one builder, then he's not rising to a level which is appropriate for a goddess's servant. So, that's exactly. She is forthright about her feelings, so he should be the same way. And I guess we've all established that she is pretty attractive. So, she's speculating just a little bit, but in some of these things she's saying, but, well, people can spit lies out, the truth always comes through. For instance, the Avaro, who is uh, working for the great goddess, she he uses a. Uh, Oh, he was forced to become the apostle and is being used as a kind of a male prostitute. That's a pretty harsh way of describing the situation. <laughs> Well, that's an example of a rumor she, she thinks might come about. And the common people have a fondness for ru rumors about the famous people around them. So, in order to manage the people... Now, oh, that comes in a few more lines. So, if he takes advantage of her offer, then Avaro will rise in nobility, and at that point, the people will respect him as a servant worthy of the goddess. So, by gaining this social standing, he'll also be promoting the interests of the goddess. And the people won't make stupid rumors, I guess.
So, Navarro's got the idea. Doesn't he agree with it? At this point, she's basically whispering in his ear. Anyway, Navarro says he's not going to take on a lover just so he can improve his social standing. Navarro doesn't do anything except the things he wants to do. Even the time when, even at the time that he chose to contract with Fia as her apostle, and the time when he became her lover, those were times when he was pursuing his own goals, after a fashion. So if you want to connect with Avaro here, he will need to actually feel something for her in his heart. This nobility nonsense and the Rauroso region is entirely unconnected. Even the fact that she's got a hot body isn't going to be enough. Yeah, but that's one of her strong points. <laughs> that she's a noble, that she's a ruler. <laughs> well, those aren't bad points. Well, basically, you can't just condescendingly lecture him and then expect him to give him what give you what you want. Well, there are people who have these arranged marriages, but Avaro has no interest in that kind of thing. So, Avaro fell for Fia, and it's not because she is a goddess. It's because she's cute, because he can't leave her alone. And because he wants to be by her side. If Rishu wants to have that kind of relationship as well, she'll have to choose a different weapon for the task. So is she gonna give up now? Uh, she thinks that's fabulous and she's getting even more fired up to get it done. Great. So, she's going to use her charms and steal him away from Fia. Or at least steal a little bit of sex from him, I guess. Hey, when you say this stuff, could you at least try to pretend that I don't hear you? Oh, that's interesting. Avaro just now notices that he finished his job. So that keeping his hands moving while his mind is otherwise occupied actually worked. Interesting. Alright, that will wrap us up for this time. So, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.